I will go ahead and share my screen. And everyone, since it's just me, I probably will not be paying attention to chat. But as we're going up oh, there, Sai. There we go. Sai is going to do his part. I guess while Sai is coming into the room, my name is Christopher Bishop. I am a librarian here at Agnes Scott, and Sai Williams works in ITS. Hello, Sai. Are you are you live? <laughs> hey, Sai. You're, you're muted. Hey, okay. I I already uh, did the intro and everything. I was about to do your part, but I was just saying that your podcasts and that are not mine, so I would like kind of. <laughs> But so um, this is Cy Williams from ITS and Cy, do you want me to work the slides and I'll just go through and you can tell me when to turn? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. And like I said, if everyone, since I, I can view the chat too, um, if, if possible, you just hold your questions till the end. But if there's something where you're like, you know what, this just isn't going to make sense at the end, then just go ahead and, and we'll try to answer those. All right, Cy. All right, um, so my portion of the presentation will just be going over the basics of podcasting. So the I broke it up into three parts, idea generation, uh, the actual recording, and then post-production. So with idea generation, the first thing that you want to come up with is a podcast idea, obviously. Um, you want to research and refine that idea. You don't want to just have a very broad podcast. You want to make sure that you're talking about something specific and something that isn't necessarily something that everyone else is talking about. Like what unique angle can you bring to it? Uh, next thing you want to do is determine your audience format and topic. So while you're researching and refining, keep in mind, who do you want to put this podcast out to, what format the podcast will be in, will it be like interviews, uh, round table discussion, or will it be a mixed bag? Kind of have an idea of that going in. And after you've come up with all that, you want to create a title. Essentially, your goal by the end of this initial portion is to describe your podcast in one sentence. So for the podcast I host, uh, it's called Digital Breakdown, and I interview members of the Agnes Scott community on the past, present, and future of navigating a digital world. Um, right in that sentence, it tells you the title of my podcast, the format of the podcast, my audience, and my topic. Uh, next thing you want to do is come up with episode ideas. So within the scope of your podcast, you want to research and refine your episode ideas and get them down to kind of like a science where you can describe your episode in one sentence. If you're finding that the topics that you're coming up with for your uh, podcast are straying from the scope or the original idea, I would say go back to the drawing board and try to uh, think of something else. Hey, Sai, so just a real quick question. What would you say, how many episodes in advance do you think you should plan it out? Like, what if you just have one idea? Is that going to cause you problems, or do you think that's sufficient? Um, personally, I think that will cause you problems, um, because if you don't have the idea of a podcast is to create something sustainable. So if you only have one idea for an episode, then when that one idea is over, the question will come up, what are you going to do next? So kind of planning ahead helps with that like question of is what I'm doing sustainable? Does what does the topic that I'm intrigued in, does it have multiple angles to look at it? Yeah. Okay. Next part is the production. So pre, during, and post. Um, so 
just a big general note is you want to organize and write down each step of this particular portion of the process. It'll be really helpful for future you to look at what needs to be tweaked or to pass down to someone else in case like you no longer want to handle the podcast or uh, it's a good to have a standard operating procedure basically. So the first step is pre-production. Again, going back to what I mentioned earlier, you wanna plan ahead as much as possible. You also wanna get the right equipment and tools for the production process. So you wanna get a podcast mic. Um, I suggest one that's around like $40. Um, this is the one I personally use whenever I'm recording the intro and outro for the digital breakdown. Um, and it has a pop filter on it, which is important. Um, so particular words that you say are considered to be plosives, such as the word plosive. <laughs> um, they make, they can make a pop sound, or if you speak a certain way, there could be like spittle. The pop filter basically protects the microphone from distort, from picking up distortion from those really harsh sounding words. Um, and then I would suggest using Audacity for audio editing because it's a free tool. It's pretty beginner friendly. There's a lot of tutorials out there. And uh, this is the link where you can download it for whatever platform that you have. And we will send the slideshow to everyone afterwards. So don't worry, you don't have to take frantic notes or anything. Yeah. And just a brief mention of what FFmpeg is basically. Um, it's if you have a video that you just want the audio from, you can upload the, uh, the video to um, Audacity and it'll just strip the audio. So you'll just be using pure audio. Um, so let's say you got your podcast mic and you figure out the basics of Audacity or at least you download it. The next step is considerations for while you're recording the podcast. So the rule of thumb for recording is better the source, better the final result. You don't wanna go in post-production and have to edit out all these sounds, background sounds, all this extra noise, because at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do before it just seems kind of like a fruitless endeavor. So you wanna make sure you get a quality source from the beginning. To do that, you wanna record in a quiet space with no echo. So that could be like a closet or a room with furniture, something with like padding in the space. So uh, sound doesn't just bounce off the wall. Um, you wanna encourage guests to use a headset or a microphone if you cannot directly provide them either. Um, Headsets and microphones tend to have better sounds than what's natively on a person's laptop. Um, but sometimes headset, sometimes headsets are actually detrimental. So just keep an ear out for what sounds better when you're in the testing phase of a recording session. Because I always recommend, and I didn't put this in the notes, but I always recommend reserving at least 10 to 15 minutes before the actual interview or whatever episode you're recording to figure out technological difficulties. Um, and during the recording process, you may wanna use Zencaster, which is a low bandwidth online recorder or soundtrack. Um, both of these you need to make an account with, um, but Zencaster is more simple than Soundtrap. Uh, both of them record audio, record each participant on a separate track. So it's easier to manage um, noise in one person's track without affecting another person's track uh, audio. So let's say you've got everything recorded. Um, the next thing you're going to move on to is post-production. So for editing, the general rule of thumb is three to five minutes of editing per minute of your podcast. Uh, so you want to 
dedicate time to being able to edit your podcast. I would give the advice of at first trying, your, and I mentioned this in a later slide, but I would give the advice of at first trying your hand at every part of the podcasting process and then figuring out what to delegate. And editing is one of those things that you may end up delegating. Um, but first you have to know what to edit. So that's why I say it's important to edit a podcast yourself first so you know what you're listening for. And then you can uh, tell people who you've hired or are working with you or whatever the situation may be that, hey, I want this cut, I want it to sound like this, so on and so forth. And that's just a picture of the podcast microphone with a pop filter that we showed a different version of earlier. So the final part of podcasting is once you've got everything recorded, you got to edit it, uh, you want to distribute it, obviously. So um, there's so many just distribution platforms, but the two, one, the two main ones that I recommend are Anchor and Transistor. Anchor is free, distributes to all major podcast platforms. The downside is that you can only have one podcast per account. But that may not matter to you if you're just planning on doing one podcast anyway. Um, Transistor is not free, distributes to all major pl podcast flat platforms. But the big difference between Anchor and Transistor is that with Transistor, you're able to have more than one podcast under the same account. Um, the Digital Breakdown uses Anchor. Uh, the Agnes Scott podcast, Leading Everywhere, they use uh, Transistor because they're planning on incorporating more podcasts underneath the account. And I was thinking too, Sai, I've definitely seen people who have invested a lot of money in equipment and platforms and things like that, and then do it for a couple months and they don't like it. And then they have all this stuff sitting around. So I definitely think with Audacity and Anchor, even though they may not be the most top level things you can use, the fact that they're great and they're free and it helps you really understand whether you really want to do this or not is super helpful because i definitely like i said i've i've seen people spend three four five hundred dollars and then they don't touch the mic or phone yeah. and all the other stuff after a couple of months and it's like oh what do i do and i you know i have this equipment and you're not going to get much for it afterwards once you've used it so just kind of a caveat i was thinking of yeah i agree and these are just some general tips so um you want to think of idea generation, production, and distribution as a cycle to revisit if things aren't working the way that you would like for them to do. Um, there's nothing wrong with going back to the drawing board. Uh, the, and in terms of podcasting, it's a constant game of approval, especially when you're, you don't have like a conglomerate behind you or something like that. Um, just do your best, and if something's not working, you fix it. Uh, consistency is key. So going back to what Chris meant, I mean Chris said, um, don't let your don't let yourself get burnt out. Uh, don't let yourself be inconsistent in posting either. So if if you post once if you say you're going to post once a week post once a week but if you discover that you can't post once a week readjust your schedule to something that is suitable for you and that you can make the target of every time if that's bi-weekly do that if that's like once a month do that um but you want to have consistency so you can build up an audience and uh, you want to try dabbling in all the things that are podcasting just so you have an idea of what it takes and what you need for your specific podcast. Uh, if your format allows for it, because there's certain formats, like if you're covering news topics and that sort of thing, you won't be able to do this. But if you're doing like interviews or uh, roundtable talks, uh, you can I would suggest recording as much as you can ahead of time and then using a time release feature on your posting platform, which is basically 
setting it up so where the next episode comes out you have you've uploaded all the episodes and they come out at a schedule that you dictate and the final tip is to listen to other podcasts with smaller large audiences for inspiration as well as entertainment so you have a better idea of what you're doing you have a better idea of what interests you um just like how a writer should read uh, podcasters should listen to other podcasts. And these are my sources. Um, and Chris also contributed some sources as well. Um, I read a book called So You Want to Start a Podcast by Kier Kristen Minzer. I attended a podcast workshop um, January 2020 at SCAD, but there are online podcasting workshops as well that you can attend um, during this time period. I have experience with the digital breakdown and then there's LinkedIn learning with different, uh, act with different lessons that you can pick up from there. And everyone has access through Agnes to LinkedIn learning. I thought it was interesting too. There's some that are specific to podcasts, certainly, but there's thing, I, I don't think so, people are always aware of what's in LinkedIn learning, but how to project vocal confidence, speaking confidently and effectively. I know that one of the things that podcasting can really help with is confidence, speaking effectively, getting your message across, enunciating, all those kinds of things. So there's things that are both specific to podcasting and then kind of inform podcasting too in there. Yeah. And these are just some exemplar podcasts that Chris and I um, have come across during our podcast listening times. Um, so if you want to check out any of these, uh, you're free to. They all have like a different flavor to them. Um, Wine and Crime host is hosted by three women and uh, they do true crime while they drink wine. So it's like a comedy podcast um, about true crime. Uh, then we have historical podcasts and each one of these, despite all of them being historical, they all come in with their different flavor, which is what uh, you wanna look for. Even if you're interested in doing a topic that is, there's a, it's really saturated in that field. You just want to think about what can you add to the conversation. Um, pop culture stuff, the read um, and minority corner, um, music, the sect, uh, the read. I will say that if you want to listen to it, it is has has a lot of cursing in it. It's funny, um, but it has a lot of cursing in it. So I would put your headphones on if you're. Or in an area that cursing would be unacceptable. So. And when Sai and I were playing this, we, we talked about um, making sure that podcasting, uh, a podcast that were more diverse were represented. I think what's interesting here is with podcasts like History is Gay or Making Gay History, is looking at overlooked parts of history and then how can you present those in both an informative and entertaining way. What I think is so cool about podcasting is that you can have something that can be representative of both yourself, and then you can find something that speaks to an audience that has been overlooked. And so I think what all of these highlight too is that you have areas that in some ways are broad, but also there's a need to be informed about these topics, uh, about these viewpoints, like with Minority Corner. You can see there, put a little description, it is, um, it's a black man talking about uh, nerdy things, but it also goes across culture, news, media, history. So it's broad in scope, but then again, it's someone who uh, basically calls himself a sexy blurred, the combination of black and nerd, to look at these things and look at them from a very particular viewpoint, which I think is, is very interesting. And it kind of gives you the idea that if you can find something that speaks to a particular audience, but yet resonates with perhaps a larger one too, you're going to be able to find uh, an audience with that. And then a couple more, Fias Fables is, is literally uh, short stories, fables, uh, from the perspective of a um, kind of a storyteller who is transgender. 
And then identity, um, Asian American and Asian enough are really interesting. They look at Asian American culture, everything from cooking to music to film, all aspects, and just giving people um, insights both within the Asian American communities and outside. And then certainly too with um, Tamarindo and Afro queer, looking at those also, those are very particular experiences that are shared and we will, um, I'll email everyone the slideshow and then those links would be there. But those are ones that we thought were really of interest and um, said a lot about both the person hosting it, but then also them trying to be both entertaining and educating at the same time. And then Sai, did you wanna to speak to this slide? Um, yeah, just real briefly. Um, one question that I get a lot is like, how do I find podcasts to listen to? Um, and these four bullet points are just, four different ways you can find podcasts, web searching, you go on a specific platform like Anchor, Spotify, Buzzsprout, um, particularly Anchor and Buzzsprout, if you're looking for like smaller podcasts to kind of almost, you can, there is a way of advertising within the podcast community where it's like, I you scratch my back, I scratch yours. So, you can find those sort of people on Anchor and Spot Buzzsprout. Um, you can use a third party app and I give some suggestions there. And you can check out offerings from production companies behind a podcast you already like, um, which are also known as podcast conglomerates. So Gimlet and Loudspeakers are two examples of podcast conglomerates. And then we're going to talk a little bit about copyright and fair use. I don't want to belabor these points or scare anyone, but they are important to talk about. And I think as we jump into this part, is before we get into myths, Sai, one of the, the music um, podcasts, and we had a conversation about this the other day, um, Dissect. Do you remember the conversation we were having? Oh, is, did Sai go? I'm here. Oh, you're there. Okay, my, my screen changed. Can you mention a little bit about how music is used? And and because I think one of the things that people find to be um, are confused about is you're, you're listening to something you're like, well, wait, I'm listening and I hear Beyonce or I hear something that I know is commercially released. How is that person able to do that? Could you talk about Dissect for a moment? Yeah, so Dissect is a podcast that does deep dives into like every season is a deep dive into a specific album. Their latest season, um, they deep dived into Beyonce's Black is King and Lemonade as well. So one of the things that if you listen to that podcast, they play clips of the song, but average people cannot do that because uh, Spotify, this podcast I sect is a Spotify podcast. So they already have access to licensing materials that the average person just in truth cannot afford um so if you listen to podcasts that play samples of music and they're big like switched on pop or dissect that's because they've struck licensing deals yeah so as we talk about this i want everyone and, and we'll talk about a little more and just for a couple of minutes i don't want to keep anyone too far over but it's important to remember because you're going to see i mean i know students all the time are like well wait a minute i saw that on youtube or i i heard that i don't understand what the problem is just like i was saying with licensing and that you can then also um, oftentimes these things get pulled down once the copyright owner is aware so there's there's resources and things you can do to use music in that just remember and as far as just remember you have to be careful as far as myths go there's this idea that if you use a small segment of music that it's okay. It's not okay. Technically, they could come after you for using five seconds of a copyrighted song if you don't have permission. Um, and then also there's this myth that if you provide credit, well, I provided credit, it doesn't exonerate you. Um, and then also nonprofit causes. Let's say I want to use the theme song and I'm producing a podcast to promote my nonprofit charity. Again, no, you still have to get permission. So basically, your use of copyright music, if you're going to, needs to fall under fair use. These links will take you in and give you more information. But basically, just know if it's copyrighted, 
you really don't want to use it unless you have licensing. And we'll talk about there's all kinds of other uh, royalty free public domain music that you can use. And then fair use, what is it? That's basically the legal doctrine that allows you to use to do um, to, to use creative works for criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. But you want to be really careful. Fair use doesn't mean, oh, I am telling you it is for educational purposes, therefore that exonerates me. It won't. I think it's interesting sometimes on YouTube, I'll see videos where the person will sample music and then they'll say that they're doing it under fair use because they're offering criticism. But then it's basically the person kind of laughing and talking about how crazy the track is or something. That's not commentary. So you're going to see examples of that. It doesn't really fall under that. And those videos usually aren't up very long. Uh, once the copyright owner becomes aware of it. Usually they would just send you a cease and desist order. Sometimes though, they could come after you legally. And an important thing to remember too, when it comes to copyright, ignorance is not a defense. You can't say, well, I didn't know that it will, it will not keep you from being legally liable. And this basically goes through and it tells you it's a fair use checklist and an evaluator and it gives you an idea of whether you can or not. But for the most part, I would steer clear of that. And again, here's some more guides and I'll send this out. You can look at those. Public domain, if you find something, it is marked as public domain. Now, I don't mean just somebody stuck the words public domain on it, but it's public domain, like it was produced by the um, federal government or it was published before 1923. Those things are considered public domain. You can do what you want with those. You can use them as music, um, you can chop them up, you can remix them, you can do what you want. Now, the problem is most of you for a podcast are probably not going to use a recording from 1920. So there, but there are things, like I said, government, um, everything that the federal government releases is considered in the public domain. And certainly there are institutions and individuals who do release things under public domain. So if you ever see public domain, it's great, you're covered, you can definitely use it. Just make sure that the creator's calling it public domain, not someone that copied it, stuck it on their website, and then said it was public domain. That is not. It has to be the creator. One of the things that you want to look for, and I'll show you some repositories for this, are Creative Commons licensing. That's basically where the creator said, okay, here's the different types of licenses I'm going to apply to my work, and it tells you how you can use it. And sometimes it'll be uh, the Creative Commons license will basically tell you, you can do whatever you want with it. Other times it'll say, well, as long as you give me an attribution, as long as you cite me, it's fine. Others will be, um, you can do what you want with it, but if you remix it in some way, you need to give me credit. So basically these Creative Commons licenses will tell you what you can do with them. And this is, between this and public domain, that's what you want, because it really tells you exactly what you can do, and there's no gray area there. These are some sound recording repositories, Free Music Archive, Internet Archives, Audio Archive, Muse Open, Project Gutenberg, Wikipedia Soundlist, Library of Congress, American Memory. Each of these have thousands, I mean, Library of Congress, you're talking hundreds of thousands, I think Free Music Archive and Internet Archive does too. And basically when you click on these and you go in, you can search by, um, you can search by genre, or you can search by certain types of music. Like see here, this is genre. You can look like pop, jazz, soul, feeling, energy, duration. And then you would search everything in Free Music Archive. Everything in all of these, it's free to use. It's royalty free, it's public domain. If there are some limitations for some reason, it'll tell you, but most of these don't have any. So when you see royalty free, public domain, Creative Commons licenses, and then those licenses will tell you what you can do. This is the kind of stuff you want to use. Now, are you going to find Beyonce in here? No. Will you find music, though, that's good for setting a mood or um, fade-ins or fade-outs or things like that? Yes. And then here's some other ones, CC Mixter, Jamindo, LibreVox, uh, again, Project Gutenberg audiobooks. These are going to be audiobooks usually that have fallen out of copyright. So there's a ton of places to look for that. And then the last thing is equipment. Not sure if you all know, some of you probably do, and if you might not. We have a ton of different audio equipment. We have lots of Zoom recorders, uh, Tascam recorders, phone recording kit, Yeti podcasting kits, Audio Technica podcasting kits. We have um, 
cameras that a uh, Canon cameras that do a really good uh, job of recording um, different mics. We also have it doesn't show it on here, but we have boom mics. If you wanted to record, say with a task and record it and hold it over the person you're interviewing. Um, so we have a lot everything you could think of that you would need for podcasting we have. And basically what you do is and this link is um, on here. And then you can also there's a under research guides, there's a world cat research guide. Basically, you're just going to go into items to borrow on the website. And then you're going to go through and find the equipment you want. And then you're going to click, click, click on check availability. And then you can place a hold here. And then we will process, process that request in the library. And then you'll get a notice saying it's available for pickup. So normally if you request, like if you requested it right now, we have to close a little early because of filming. Um, but normally it would be ready for you probably around six. So usually it's about an hour. If it's in the evening though, and it's close to closing, it may be the next day. Or if it's a Friday and we're close on a Saturday, it would be ready for you on Sunday. And then you can check these out for three days at a time. But let's say you're going to be, let's say it's a Wednesday and you're not going to be back until the next Monday, just let us know and we can um, extend the loan date and then you can have it for longer. So usually, it's normally three days, but if you need it for six or seven days, it's not a big deal. And I think that was everything that we were going to talk about. So I will go ahead and stop sharing. Are there any questions about podcasting? And it can be both doing or suggestions. No? Okay, well, I will send um, tomorrow, I will send the PowerPoint and then the recording will probably be up in the next couple of days and I will probably send that separately. Um, and then our emails are also going to be on the slide, both Cy and I. So if you have any questions, um, if it's equipment, certainly email me if you just want to talk about suggestions or something, both of us. And then Cy is certainly more of the expert with production and things like that. So use these resources. We would love to talk to you about podcasting and whatever you might have an interest in. Great. Thanks, everybody. Um, again, if you have any questions, email us later and just look for something in the next couple of days with the slideshow and the recording. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, Sai. Thank you. Oh, uh, I mean, I uh, thought we were going to uh, okay. review what happened. <laughs> I just figured you, you said you had an appointment earlier, so. No, I, that was earlier in the day. And the, the reason I was late today is because my computer was giving me fits. Uh, oh, okay. Like the internet was, it was just painfully slow. And I, I had to move locations and gather all my stuff. So I was a little worried because I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to make this work. <laughs> but, but for your part, I was like, oh, that's really science part. So I'm after really, I'll, I'll wing this, but you know, I'm gonna make it work. And excuse the email, but I, I didn't, I was like, I, I figured you were having technical problems. But I was like, oh, where's Sigh? Sigh. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> but yeah, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I think, um, you know, we probably could have used a little more time, but I think we went through everything. Um, they didn't ask a lot of questions, but I don't know. They said nice things at the end. Yeah. So, and we'll send out the um, PowerPoint, which will have the nice links, and then we'll send the recording. So I think we'll be good. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, we had like an audience of six, right? Was it, it was six or eight. It said 15 were signed up. I know there weren't 15. I think it, maybe it was seven. I think it was seven. Okay. I think when I admitted everyone in, I think it was seven. Okay. I think that's what I saw. Because at one point, too, you disappeared from the scheme, uh, the screen. I thought, oh, crap. <laughs> the size of, did, did your Zoom drop out? So I think I counted seven people on there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I'll send, I'll send out that PowerPoint tomorrow because we, we've got to leave. They told us they're going to film and they want us out of here. Um, and then I'll submit the recording to Casey. And then I think Casey uploads it to YouTube. Okay. Cool. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Sai. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.